Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I recently did a video talking about finesse jig trailers and what some of my favorite finesse jig trailers were. Something along the lines of this little three inch pit boss on the back of this Kitek casting jig. And I got a lot of questions from viewers asking me specifically with regular size jigs, what types of trailers I like to use. So not what jig trailer, so not the actual trailer, but what type of trailer I like to use under certain circumstances. So I want to break this down to you because I truly believe that the jig trailer itself is every bit as important as the jig. I, I feel like the jig does a good job at kind of creating the disturbance, but the trailer itself is what gets the fish to commit to eating your bait. So the two of them put together work great. Uh, the two of them separately are not that great by themselves and a jig without a trailer in my opinion is not even worth throwing. I know you can catch fish doing it but I would rather at that point throw just the trailer versus the jig because I think there's more fish attracting qualities in the trailer itself. But when you put them together there's no denying that they catch big fish. But having said all of that I feel like the trailer itself is often overlooked by the angler. I think a lot of anglers out there choose one trailer and they put it on all the jigs for all year long, no matter what type of cover they're fishing. And I feel like that's a mistake. I think you want to look at three things. You want to look at your water temperature, so time of year that you're fishing, your water uh, clarity, as well as the type of cover. Those three things, to me, dictate what jig trailer I'm going to use. And I've got five completely different jig trailers that I like to use. So I'm going to break those down for you. I'm going to tell you when and where I like to throw each one. And before I get into that though, I do want to remind you guys that I do a bunch of lake breakdowns through fishthemoment.com. We provide 40 waypoints uh, based on the specific time of year for those lakes. There's hundreds of them that are done at this point. So if you're looking for a little bit of help, go check those out. I actually got an email this week from a viewer that purchased one and caught a new personal best off of one of the exact waypoints I provided. So that made me feel really good and that just kind of shows that the spots are very much uh, good quality spots that are going to help you catch fish. Also, if you're looking to purchase some tackle, please use my Tackle Warehouse affiliate link. That's a great way to support the channel too, so I'll put that as well as the lake breakdown uh, links in the video description. All right, so let's get into this. Uh, like I said, I've got five different trailers that I like to use, five different styles. So we're just gonna go through them in no particular order. The first one we're gonna go with is a standard chunk style trailer. This is a Berkeley Power Bait chunk. This is just a do-nothing trailer. It's a traditional trailer that uh, is kind of geared after the old Uncle Josh pork frog look. It's just got a, a wider body to allow you to thread it on or clip it through the hook if you want. Uh, but the legs themselves are more kind of massy, but they don't provide much actual vibration. They don't do much. This to me is one of the best cold water trailers. And I think it has to do with the fact that they don't do much other than kind of just float the trailers up there. Uh, but they're not putting out so much vibration that they're almost a detrimental to you. But I do really like these trailers for uh, a couple of things. Cold water fishing, but I like them if I'm stroking a jig. So I'm looking for something that's got a little bit of flare, but will let the bait fall fast back to the bottom, which is one of the keys to stroking a jig in my opinion. But they're also a jig trailer that I'm going to look to use in ultra clear water. Uh, in ultra clear water, I generally want something that looks more realistic than provides action or vibration to allow the fish to find it. Because in very, very clear water, the fish have a good look at your bait and they don't really need to feel the bait. So in this case, I would rather have a bait that produces nothing in clear water in terms of that vibration. And when you look at the profile, they do have very good crayfish imitating profile legs. So that's when I would throw a chunk. Now having said all that, I generally don't throw a chunk trailer all that much. One, a jig isn't necessarily going to be one of my first choices in ultra clear water. Uh, I do like a jig in cold water conditions, so I do throw for that. 
and I do like the stroke a jig, but a stroke in a jig is kind of one of those things that you got to have the right situation for it. It's not something you can just pick it up, go do it all over the lake and catch fish. The next style of uh, trailer that I want to talk about is what I would consider your cross style trailer. So this is a Berkeley Chigger Craw on the back. Uh, it's a great trailer in terms of creating vibration and motion. It really gets those legs flapping. And to me, this is the type of trailer that I like to use in dirty water conditions. So if I'm fishing dirty water, I want my bait to fall right down, say a stump, or I wanna bring it down the rocks, and I wanna create vibration and movement to help those fish key in on the bait. That's where a big flapper style craw bait really comes in handy. So for me, if I'm fishing dirty water, that's one time where I like to do it. I also really like to do it on a football head jig. So if I'm dragging something on the bottom, I want to create some movement because I'm not going to be able to get much out of some of my other trailers. So if I'm fishing a standard football jig style, which is usually going to be in deeper water, I want something that's going to draw some motion. I'm generally dragging it nice and slow. So the legs aren't going to be going crazy, but I'm still going to get some motion out of it. To me, it's a killer football jig trailer. So those are the kind of the times when I like to throw something that really has a lot of motion. The opposite end of that spectrum is more of your beaver style bait. So this is a Berkeley Max Scent Creature Hog. Now I really, really like to fish these in clearer water and when I'm fishing around laydowns. Now here's the reason for that. A beaver style bait is wide and narrow, if you can see that. So what that allows your jig to do is get some more gliding motion out of it. With a beaver style trailer, it's not necessarily going to fall vertical. You're going to get a little bit of gliding motion out of it. To me, that is a very good way to trigger reaction strikes in clear water. So it's not producing any movement with the flappers, but you're getting a little bit more of a horizontal fall versus a vertical fall, which means the bass that are tracking it think the bait is trying to move away from them. Therefore, they'll react and eat the bait. So I really like it in clear water. The reason I really like it when I'm fishing around laydowns is for that same reason. So if I throw this into a laydown, bait falls down, I pull the jig up, I usually pull it up to the laydown, let it fall back down. So every time I pull it up or drop it back down, my jig will have a little bit more side to side motion versus just straight up and down and that's because of the trailer. So in some instances what you'll actually have the bait do is glide under the lay down logs under the branches and kind of get into a wider area versus just straight up and down in that same place that it is. So when I'm fishing lay downs I really like to have that wider profiled creature hog or beaver style uh, appearance because it helps me kind of fish that log and get around throughout that log. So that's something that I really like to do. Like I said, it's also really good in clear water. Now the difference between these, lots of vibration out of this trailer, no kicking motion out of this trailer, I do probably throw the majority of the time something between that. And that's where I've talked a lot about it on the channel, just your simple pit boss style trailer. It has flapping motion, but it's not a huge amount of flapping motion where it really uh, prevents the bait from moving around. So if I'm fishing generally what I would consider standard water clarity, anything from two to four foot of water clarity, I'm probably throwing a pit boss on the trailer just because I want a little bit of kick in motion. I want a little wider body that still allows my bait to, to move around a little bit. So that's the standard one that I go with because I feel like it's the best of both of those worlds. Uh, again, this is like an all season kind of fish it anywhere type trailer. The last one we're going to talk about is kind of the trend that's been going on the last year or two years, and that's to throw a stick bait on the back. I've talked about it on the channel before. Uh, for me, the stick bait has got a couple of times when I really like it. So this is more of a warm water trailer. I don't necessarily like to do this in cooler water periods. I like to do it when the bluegill are active, when the bluegill are spawning, 
and then throughout the warmest part of the summer months. And for me, it's all about really fishing this more around the bluegills or it's about fishing it around grass. So I like to pitch this in the uh, grass holes and part of that is because the trailer is not going to hold up on the grass. It's going to shoot right down into the holes in the grass. You'll be able to work it well. When I let a, one of the ways I like to fish a jig when I'm flipping holes in the grass is let it hit the bottom and then I like to let it sit there. And when you get your stick worm like this general sitting off of it, just sitting at the bottom, it's an enticing thing that a lot of fish will come and eat. The other thing I like to do with this is to stroke this through grass. So if I'm fishing deep weed lines, like I love to do in the summer months here in the northern part of the country, I like to throw this up and stroke it down the deep weed line. And it just, again, this trailer is a really good way to uh, come through the grass, but at the same time, a lot of your bites come when you let the bait fall back down. So I like to have a fast fall and there's nothing here that's holding my, my jig up higher up in the water column. It shoots up, it shoots right back down. It's a really good presentation for stroking a jig as well. But those are the five main jig trailers that I'm using right now. Uh, all variations, they're not, they're not huge differences, but they all make a little bit of a difference. So when you choose the right one, based on the conditions, based on the cover you're fishing, I think you're gonna get more bites if you make the right decision. If you choose wrongly, you're probably gonna limit the number of bites. So let me know what you guys think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you have some trailers you'd love to share with the rest of us? Uh, I love fishing jigs, guys. It's a great way to catch a big fish. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned. New video coming out tomorrow for you.